What's up, YouTube? Penguin three two one here. Um, I was asked by a few people to do a tutorial for the Pokemon trading card game because a lot of people are interested in learning how to play. So I guess I'll start out with this. Um, so I'm gonna start out with the types of cards that there are. Okay, we're gonna start out with the trainer cards. Um, there are, the, of course, they're the trainers. Um, they're su they're separated into supporter, item, and there's one called Stadium. I don't have any Stadium cards, so. Basically, Stadium, just like in Yu-Gi-Oh, is basically a field spell card, essentially. Um, when one is played, the other is taken off the field, put into the discard pile. You can only play one supporter per turn. When it is played, it will remain on the field until the end of the turn and then discarded. Items, however, you can play as many times per turn as you would like. So, um, then of course, you have the Pokemon. So, you start at basic Pokemon. This is what you start out with. Um... You can later on evolve them, but they must remain on. They cannot evolve them the f first turn they are summoned. So, like with Oshawott here, you would have to play him, wait a turn. Next turn, you could evolve him into that, and then after he has been on the field for a turn, um, you could play the Samurott, evolve it again. And then for certain things, kind of like in Magic the Gathering, if any of you know that. Um, for tackle attack, like as you see there, it requires one water energy. This isn't a good example, but it's lightning energy. Um, it's just let's use a water one. So basically, you have your Pokemon in play. You just put your water energy right there, and depending on the number of energies that you have, you can use certain moves. Um, as you see there, that the white energy right there can be any energy. Basically, there are colorless energies, but Colorless energies just cover the colorless, whereas for the requirement, any energy can cover it. So, that covers the evolutionary and the basic kind of cards. I'll start with um, how, a general tar how a game will start up now. Okay, a game of Pokemon will start with um, seven cards in hand. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You'll draw your seven first. And then, for how you win in the game, basically, you after you draw in your hand, you get the first six cards from the top of your deck. These are your prizes. If any of you play the video games, you normally get six Pokemon, so that's what it's basically supposed to reference. Every time you defeat your opponent's Pokemon, you will take a one of your prizes at random, add it to your hand. So, it'll just be set up like that. You'll just have your prizes laid out like that. You'll have your hand. Another thing with your hand is that when you look at it, if your starting hand does not have a basic Pokemon, as you see, that is stage one. Um, stage two Pokemon, and another stage two. Stage two is the second evolution, or the third evolutionary past the basic. You, you know what I mean. So, um, so since this hand does not have a basic Pokemon, you'll be forced to mulligan your hand back, in which case you won't have drawn your prizes yet at all because you have not had a successful hand to getting a basic Pokemon. Basically you will just um, restart your hand with six cards in hand and hope to get a basic one. I believe that when you go back you also your opponent will get one extra draw off of this. So they'll start with eight in hand instead of seven. So okay let's redo it. Okay now for an example of a, of a successful hand two three four five six seven um, as you see, we have a basic Pokemon. Um, basically, you, if you do have a, have a basic Pokemon, you will start at your active zone and your bench. You get five Pokemon up to five Pokemon on your bench. If you run out of Pokemon either on your bench or on the active zone completely, then you will also lose the match. So, since you had a basic, you start things out face down until you and your opponent have selected your Pokemon. Three, four, five, six for your prizes. Um, once your opponent has selected them, you flip them face up, start it. So for turn one, you will draw. You see I got another basic, you put that down on the bench. When this Pokemon um, either retreats, there's a retreat cost, one energy. Since it's colorless, you can use any kind of energy. As I said before, you know, fire, water, whatever energy is attached to it. There's also weakness that I should have explained. Um, you see that says times two, you can see that at all for lightning, so if it's facing like a lightning Pokemon, it'll take double damage from either of the moves that it has. So you can also play one energy per turn. So attach an energy to Oshawott. 
um, an item, po Pokeball, Supporter, not play any of those right now, just this first turn, just use Tackle Attack. You're able to attack on the first turn so long as you have the energy required to use the attack. So it'll use Tackle doing 10 damage towards its health right there, towards the enemies. So let's say following turn, they do their energies, whatever. Next turn, draw phase, draw that. Now since Oshawott has been on there for at least one turn, as you, as you see it is a stage one Pokemon, requires Oshawott. I don't know if you can see that at all. But you simply place it over there, like that. That's how you evolve. Um, so we'll play Pokeball. Pokeball's effect is that you can flip a coin. If heads, you can search your deck for any Pokemon. Add it to your hand. Just for the example, let's say you got heads. We'll add Samurott. Samurott's the next form. It cannot evolve since it's still the same turn that you play the, put the Duot into play. So we'll put our water energy on it. Since this attack requires two energies, it's colorless. It has two waters on it, so it fills the requirement. Water Gun. You can use Water Gun for 30 damage towards the opponent Pokemon. Let's say it was something weak like a normal monster with like 50 hit points or 40 hit points or something. So you'll be able to pick a random prize from your prize zone. It'll get added to your hand. to a Samurott. So, next turn, they do their stuff, play energies, your turn, draw phase. Um, you see you drew a basic Pokemon, so just put that on your bench. Um, it has been a turn, so Duat can evolve into Samurott. And if you took any damage or anything, Potion, it is an item, so you can play as many as you want. It'll heal 30 damage. Um, Professor Juniper is a supporter card. You can only play, as I said earlier, you can only play one per turn. So you'll basically just place it right there beside the Pokemon. Professor Juniper's effect will discard your hand, draw seven cards. So I think you get the basic gist of the game. That's basically how it'll keep going turn from turn. And your turn or attack certain things with as long so long as you got the requirement. Um as soon as you've managed to kill either six of their Pokemon or they ran out of Pokemon on their bench or the active zone, you will be able to, or that is how you win the game. Okay, I decided to look up some of the rules on paralysis, sorry for mispronouncing that earlier, for um, paralysis, sleeping, and some other stuff, so I'm going to do, I'm going to explain that to you too. It's, it's not very com complicated at all. So um, basically, if your opponent were to use some move that would put you to sleep, a Pokemon will be placed like that. At the end of each turn, you'll flip a coin. If heads, you, your Pokemon will wake up and you'll be able to move. You'll be able to move. If you get tails, it will stay asleep for the turn. You will not be able to retreat or use any attacks. So you pretty much just your Pokemon just kind of useless for that turn, not able to do anything. So that's sleep. If your Pokemon gets paralyzed, however, it's still the same thing. If it gets paralyzed, it'll go to It'll go sideways for the turn. When it becomes your turn, your Pokemon cannot attack or retreat at the end of the turn. It will automatically switch back. You don't, there's no flipping of coins involved or anything. It's just basically one turn where you can't do anything and it's back to normal. So that's paralysis. Um, next we'll talk about poison. If something occurs that makes your Pokemon get poisoned, um, nothing will happen. It will not switch your card at all. All that will happen is you'll put a poison counter. Let's call this a counter. Um, You'll put a poison counter on your Pokemon, and in between every turn, you're, you'll put a damage counter on your Pokemon. All a damage counter is is 10 damage. So basically, your Pokemon will just take 10 damage in between turns. That is about it. Until you use a card such as full, it, such as full heal, or use some move that will heal it, it'll just take 10 damage in between every player's turn. So that's poison. Let's talk about confusion next. If something occurs that makes your Pokemon become confused, your Pokemon is simply placed like that. Um, if you were to declare an attack, such as Pike for his, as long as you have the requirements, you'll be forced to flip a coin. If heads, the attack will be successful and it'll go through. If tails, you the attack will fail and you'll do 20 damage towards yourself. Also, if you are confused, um, you can still retreat your Pokemon as you have the cost right there. This one is two colorless energy. Um, you flip a coin. If heads, you will successfully you'll remove the two energies. 
to retreat it, and you'll successfully ret successfully retreat it, putting your a Pokemon from your bench into play. If it is tails, however, the Pokemon will stay here. It'll just stay in play, and it'll pretty much be worthless for the turn, assuming that you didn't get the attack successful either. So um, that is confusion. That's pretty much how the game is. Tell me how me how you guys thought of the tutorial. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask me. I will be glad to look them up or ask the person that runs the Pokemon tournament at my local. Um, so that's the Pokemon TCG. I definitely recommend you the game. It's a lot of fun. It's very cheap to play. I think the most expensive card in the game is like $30, $40. That's about it. Compared to Yu-Gi-Oh's Pot of Duality Solemn Warning. It's definitely... I mean, like, Samurai right here, like, the main starters and everything, like, they come literally in the starter deck. So, um, it's definitely a fun game to play with friends. I definitely recommend it, like I said. Um, so, thank you for watching. Tell me what you guys thought of the tutorial. I really hope, it, I really hope that it was helpful. And that's it.